for your many mercies, for your grace, for another blessed and holy Sabbath. Continue to be with now as we invite your Holy Spirit in the midst. Thanks for hearing and answering as we pray and ask it all in Lord's name, for your son, sweet Jesus. Amen. Um, we heard that already for enrolled connect is 120. Yeah, I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. I Luke 5, 32, it said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. And what we're dealing with today is repentance and a new birth. Don't know if we'll be able to get to the new birth, but recognize that repentance, when Christ came, he said, repent. The message of Christ was repent. The message of John the Baptist was repent. Almost all the prophets. They talk about repentance. And Christ is now saying that he came not to call the righteous, but sinners unto what? Repentance. Luke 15, 7 say, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 90 and 9 just persons which need no repentance. Right? So they said what? Joy should be in heaven, will be in heaven, right? Over one sinner that repented, more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. It's extremely important for us to, first and foremost of ourselves, to repent and also to help others to repent. Second Corinthians 7.10, it said, For godly sorrow worketh repentance, uh, to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world work at death, right? So godly sorrow work at what? Repent, repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world work at what? Death. He said, there are more souls longing to understand how they may come to Christ than we imagine. Many listen to popular sermon from the pulpit and know no better than before they listen how to find Jesus and the peace and rest which they so desire, right? So if you look at the first part, it says there are more souls longing to understand how they may come to Christ than we imagine. The question I must ask, we who are Christians that are here serving God, do we know how do we understand what it means to repent? Do we understand what it means to, to come to Christ, to rest in Christ? Many listen to popular sermon from the pulpit and knows no better than before. They listen how to find Jesus and the peace and rest which their soul desire. Ministers who preach the last message of mercy to the world should bear in mind that Christ is to be exalted at the sinner refuge. Christ said, What? If I be Lift it up, then I will draw all men to, to me. Now, how, how does one lift up Christ? Uh, how do the people of God lift up Christ? Christ in us is the holy hope of glory. When Christ is dwelling in the heart, when persons see us, they'll not see us, but they'll see Christ, and he'll be lifted up in our life, right? Many means to think that it's not necessary to preach repentance and faith with a heart all subdued by the love of God. Many ministers think that what is not necessary to preach repentance and faith with a heart all subdued by the love of God. They take it for granted that the hearers are perfectly acquainted with the gospel and that matters of different nature must be presented in order to hold their attention. If their hearers are interested, they take it as if as evidence of success. So repentance, you don't hear much about repentance from from, from the pulpit anymore, for, for, from our teaching anymore, because somehow we believe that everybody knows that we must repent, or almost everyone, and think that all understand what it means to repent. It said, the people are more ignorant in regard to the plan of salvation and need more instruction upon this all-important subject than upon any other. So the plan of salvation, 
more than anything else, the people, we need to understand this more than any other subject matter in the Bible. He said, those who assemble to listen to the truth should expect to be profited as did Cornelius and his friends. Now, therefore, are we all here presented, present before God to hear all things that are commanded be of God. Theoretically, discourse are essential that all may know the form of doctrine and see the chain of truth, link after link, united in a perfect whole. But no discourse should ever be delivered with, without pres presenting Christ and him crucified as the foundation of the gospel, making a practical application of the truth, set forth and impressing upon the people the fact. Right? So no matter what you, if you, if you study the whole Bible, Virgin, if we study the whole Bible, we'll come to realize that the whole Bible is talking about the plan of salvation. From the beginning, when God said, he said, enmity between the seed of the woman, right? You recognize that that was the gospel, the everlasting gospel. So the whole Bible, the center of it is Christ. So if you try to preach the, the Bible or teach a Bible without Christ, then that would not be the gospel. He said that the doctrine of Christ is not yea and nay, but yea and amen in Christ Jesus. After the theory of truth has been presented, then come the laborers, laborers part of the work. The people should not be left without instruction in the practical truth which relate to their everyday life, right? The people need to understand what it means, what justification means, what sanctification means, what repentance means, what living by faith means practically, right? They need to, we need to be instructed about all of these things as Christians and those who want to become Christian. They must see and feel that they are sinners. So the first thing that the gospel does to one is to strip him naked to make, him, to make us realize that the, the need of Christ. Let us see for a fact that we are sinners and we need to be what? We need to be converted, not to the church, but to be converted to God. So they must see and feel that they are sinners and need to be converted to God. What Christ said, what he did, and what he thought should be brought before them in the most impressive manner. So you see, Virgin, it's all about what Christ. Christ said, learn of me. Draw nigh unto me. Many of us have not learned of Christ. And this is why when it comes on to any topic where righteousness is concerned, we are quick to, to go for David. We are quick to go for Moses. We are quick to go for Peter. Anyone that... We, we, we classify as a man of God that somehow sin once or twice. Those are the persons that will go for, for otherwise example, but not Christ. Christ was exactly like us, and the life that he lived was the life that pleased the Father every time. And that's the life that is expected for us to live. So he said what Christ said, what he did, and what he taught should be brought before them in the most impressive manner. Desire for goodness and purity are right as far as they go. But if we start there, they avail what? Nothing. Many will go down to ruin while hoping and desire, desiring to overcome their evil propensities. They do not yield the will to God. They do not choose to serve him. So many of us, as Christians, we are hoping, we are desiring, right? And something that God tells us that is sure. Why sure? Jesus paid it all. Right? We don't, we don't host it and anything again. Can you imagine that someone, you need a house, and someone pay in full for that house and give you the key and say, all right, you must go. And the title, it belongs to you. And you will not go. You can't blame, you can't blame the person who buy it for you. Right? So that's what Jesus did. Jesus put everything in place. Right? But many of us, we're still hoping and we're still desiring to get to heaven. Many who go down to ruin will hope, will be open and desire to overcome their evil propensities. They do not heal the will to God. They do not choose to serve him. Your will is the spring of all your action. This will that forms so important a factor in the character of man 
was at the fall given into the control of Satan. So when Adam and Eve fell, and when Adam fell, the will was given to Satan. So Satan had full control at that time. Before that, Christ had full control. And he has ever since been working on man to will and to do of his own pleasure, but to the utter ruin and misery of man. So because Satan um, from the fall has control of the will of man, most times he's the one that is working his good will and his good pleasure in us. But he said, but what? But to the utter ruin and misery of man. He said, but the infinite sacrifice of God in giving Jesus his beloved son to become a sacrifice for sin enable him to say without violation, violating one principle of his government, yield yourself up to me. Give me that will take, yield yourself up to me. Give me that will. So Christ is asking for our will. Take it from the control of Satan and I will take possession of it. Then I can work in you to will and to do of my good pleasure. So God is asking us one time, Take back the will from Satan. It's not like you take the will today and you give it back to Satan tomorrow and take it back. No, no, no. If you, if you know Satan, if you take away the will from him and give it back to him, only God alone can save you. Because his intention is to what? To kill and to destroy. He said, yield yourself up to me. Give me that will. Take it from the control of Satan and I will take possession of, of it. Then I can work in you to will and to do of my good pleasure. Right? So if God does not have our will, he can't work in us. He said, when he gives you the mind of Christ, your will become as his will, and your character is transformed to be like Christ's character. When what? Let this mind be what? In us, which was also in Christ Jesus. Right? When he gives you the mind of Christ, your will become as his will, and your character is transformed to be like Christ's character. Right? Now, look at this. The, 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 a lot of times, we talk a lot about the drawing. Christ is drawing everyone to him, to himself. Right? He's saying, come. Right? And because we start the journey, we think this is okay where we are now one with God. But what Christ wants to give every man is his mind. And remember I said, if you have my mind, you will think like me, you'll act like me, you'll do everything like me, right? So if you have Christ's mind, who do you act like? If you have Christ's mind, who do you think like? If you have Christ's mind, who do you speak like? You don't speak like yourself, you speak like Christ, you act like Christ. So when Christ said, let this mind be in you, it's just like when he said in the beginning, let there be what? Light. Was there light? Yes. Let there be trees, let there be, let there be. There is power in the let there be of Christ. But guess what? When he commands the man, man has a free choice, right? To go against the power of God. Amen? The will of man is aggressive and is constantly striving to ban all things to its purpose, to bend all things to its purposes. If it is enlisted on the side of God and right, the fruit of the Spirit will appear in the light. So we know for a fact that if our will is given to God, then the Holy Spirit will be dwelling in us and will now manifest the fruit of the Spirit, which is what? Love. The, all the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is dealing with one thing, and that is what? Love, right? So it says, um, the fruit of the Spirit will appear in the life, and God has appointed glory, honor, and peace to every man that works good. Right? The impossibility lies in your own will. If you will not, then you cannot overcome. The real difficulties now, you see, we like to talk about sanctification with that is a, is a, is a work of a lifetime. The, the, it's a process where we, we sin and we, we pray and we ask for forgiveness. And that has nothing to do with sanctification. What happened? In the first place, our will, Satan still has control of our will. We, were, we did not give the will to God that he could hold it and keep it. He said, whatever that is placed in my father, placed in my hand. 
nobody at all can profit or no one. He said the real difficulties arise from the what? The corruption of an un unsanctified heart and an unwillingness to submit to the control of God. Right? The real difficulty arise from what? The corruption of an unsanctified heart. So the reason why we're sitting virgin and praying is because we are not yet sanctified. We're still alive, right? We're still being modified. We're still being advanced. We still believe in evolution, right? But we are not yet sanctified. Repent and be converted that your sins may be what? Blotted out. Repentance include what? Sorrow for sin and the what? A turning away from it, right? Look at it you now. Repentance, repent and be converted that your sins may be what? Blotted out. Repentance would include sorrow for what? Not sins, you know. Sorrow for sin, the root of it, and a turning away from it. We shall not renounce sin unless we see its sinfulness until we turn away from it in heart, there will be no real change in the life. So how, do one, how does one turn away from sin in the heart? We need a new heart. This whole heart loves to sin. So we have to allow God to pull out this heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. But in order for, us, for him to do that, our will must be taken from Satan and given to Christ. So we must be detached in order to what? Be attached, right? There are many who fail to understand the true nature of repentance. Multitudes say that they have sinned and even make outward reformation because they fear that their wrongdoing will bring suffering upon themselves. Is this genuine repentance? There are many who fail to understand the true nature of repentance. Multitudes say that they have what? sin and even make outward reformation because they fear that their wrongdoing will bring what? Suffering upon themselves. Now, is this true repentance? Is this a repentance of true godness? He said, but this is not repentance in the Bible sense. But this is not repentance in the Bible sense. They lament the suffering rather than the sin. Like, like, like Judas. Judas was sorry that his plan didn't go as, as, as how he planned it. And because of that, he, the, 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 the cry that he made was not for the wickedness that he had done, even though he said he sinned against an innocent person. Is that what he had planned, it didn't come true the way that he wanted to come true. And that is why he was lamented, right? Peter was the one that when he saw what he did to Christ, when he looked in his eye, he's, he's the one that went and wept and genuinely repent. He said, such was the grief of Esau when he saw that the birthright was lost to him forever, right? So he, um, Esau also repented when he recognized that the birthright was gone and things like that. He'd do anything after that to, to get back the birthright. But did he want the birthright in the first place? No. A, 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 a pot of lentil soup was far more important than the birthright. Balaam, terrified by the angel, Standing in the pathway with John's sword, acknowledge his guilt, lest he should lose his life. But there was no genuine repentance for sin, no conversion of purpose. A genuine, um, Balaam loved filthy lucre. He loves money. And he'll go to the excess for money. But when he recognized that he, he could have died based on the angel that was there, right? Then he repented. But that was not a genuine repentance. He said, just here is a point on which many may err, and hence they fail to receive the help that Christ desired to give them. Right? Now, how important is repentance, brethren? Because one of the things that, that we're going to find out, as much as God called us to repent, should we repent before we come to God? Let, let, let me ask some question here. Um, should a person repent first before they come to God? Should repentance take place first? Anyone out there? I've, I've been talking. Give me some feedback. Should repentance take place first? I do repentance. Repentance have to take place first before someone can come to God. All right. Let me since since nobody in that other house in a hand raised or anything like that. Is there any hand raised? Hello? All right. Um I Hello? see who I said 
Donovan Kelly out there? Brother Donovan Kelly, are you there? Huh? Julian? Yeah, I'm hearing Kelly. me. Yeah? I'm not hearing Kelly. I'm hearing you. Nurse. Speak, Kelly, speak. But I'm not hearing him. I'm hearing you. Brother me. Kelly, go ahead. Go ahead, Anne. Repeat the question. I'm not hearing him. I'm not hearing him. Okay, can I go ahead? Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, all right. The scripture says that repentance is a gift from God. So if, if it is a gift from God, there's no way you can wait until you repent before you come to God. God is the one that gives repentance. In you fact, but I tell you read earlier that God is the one who does everything. Repentance, forgiveness, justification, sanctification, glorification. It is all about Jesus. All right. Brother Kelly, your hand was up also. No, my hand was up now. Okay. <laughs> so you have anything to say on the, on the matter, Brother Kelly? No, I just might add what, what Julian says. Okay. Uh, while, while all of that is God, we have to have the desire. You have to have the desire. Yeah. All yes. right. And that is so true. Right. But Brother Taylor, Brother Taylor. Yeah, yes, Brother yes. Taylor. What does yeah. it mean that we have to have the desire? The Bible says that we do not, we do not need God. We do not seek after Him. So where do where do we get desire from? We go, we we we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Okay. We're gonna get there. All right. He said many will be open. I understand what he mean, but he said many will be open and desiring, but we'll still be lost. But he said we still have to have the desire. I know exactly that's what. Not he's... That's in a different context for repentance. Because right. many of us, that 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 um quotation. Many of us will be hoping and desiring. We that's talking to us who believe that we are already there. So we are desiring to be in heaven. We are desiring to be with Christ, but we do not have a correct understanding of repentance. So we are going along for years and we're hoping and desiring to be one with Christ, but we have not surrendered the will. But for a person who, who is out there, it is the Holy Spirit. That does all of the work. The Holy Spirit calls, draws, and pulls. And then the person listens to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and acknowledges that, yes, I am a sinner and I'm in need of Jesus. And then the process begins. All right. And the, but um, what, 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 um, what he had said, said was, not, was not really wrong, you know. What, what, remember, um, what the Lord does for us is that the Holy Spirit is always working on the, on the heart. He's always trying to convict us of sin and everything like that. If we eat to it, if we if we want want what the Holy Spirit is, is, is saying, then the Lord can give it to us. But yeah, sometimes sometimes the Holy Spirit um tried to convict us, but we turn away from him. Right? Well, is, it, 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 the desire of the heart is not after God. So therefore, um, when the spirit when the spirit come to us, what we do, we turn away, we silence the voice of the Holy Spirit that's speaking to us. But if our heart listen to the Holy Spirit and be led to Christ, then He will open to us, and open to us His word, so that we can be convicted. But the first thing is that, um, if you look in the Word of God, many of the kings. I, I I look at I look at a king this morning that I was reading about, and what happened with him is that. The Lord sent messenger to him, right? Which would have liked the Holy Spirit um, talking to him. Send the messenger. But guess what he did? He didn't want to hear. He didn't want to hear anything. So he, he ran him away and threw him in, in prison, right? Then he looked back at another king who the messenger came to him with the word of God. And what he said, he said, um, tell me, open it. What is it that the Lord want me to do? Right? So the heart, the heart is being, being, being worked on and what we decide to do is what is going to happen with us. All right? So the Holy, the Holy Spirit will, will, try, will convict us. But if you don't have the desire for Christ, when it works on you, then you will not, you will not, you will not seek after Christ. And it is after seeking, seeking after Christ, then the godly sorrow will be worked in our heart. All right. So what the question I had do we have to wait on repentance in order to come to, come to Christ? And the answer is no. 
All right, let us go. He said, just here is the point which many may err, and hence they fail of receiving the help that Christ desired to give them. They think that they cannot come to Christ unless they first repent, and that repentance prepare for the forgiveness of their sin. It is true that repentance do, does proceed the forgiveness of sin. You understand? For it is only the broken and contrite heart that will feel the need of a savior, right? So it's true that repentance comes before forgiveness. It's, it's true, but guess what? It's better to have people, you see, there's a lot of persons, they, some persons in the church, they find themselves in problem, and the first thing they decide to do is to stop, come to church. And that's where the problem lies, because when you stop, come to church, you're going to end up going to Satan church out there. Mm -hmm. And it's going that's to be right. harder, it's going to be harder for you to, 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 to get back on board. But even though you come, you should be repenting, you still keep coming. Just one day, the, the Lord has something prepared for you. And that might be the day that you surrender totally to him. So it's best for us to, to come to the Lord. He said, come to the Lord, right? He said, it is true that repentance does proceed the forgiveness of sin, for it is only the broken and contrite heart that will feel the need of a savior. But must the sinner wait till he has repented before he can come to Jesus? Is repentance to be made an obstacle between the sinner and the Savior? The Bible does not teach that the sinner must repent before he can heed the invitation of Christ. He said what? Come unto me, what? All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will, what? Give you rest. It is a virtue that goes forth from Christ that leads to what? Genuine repentance. Genuine. The Christ is calling all of mankind. He died for us, and he's calling all of mankind. Also, come. Come unto me. Leave your burden. Come unto me, and I will give you what? Rest. He said, Peter made a matter clear in his statement to the Israelites when he said, Him at God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior or to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. We can no more repent without the spirit of Christ to awake the conscience than we can be pardoned without Christ, right? We can know what? We can no more repent without the spirit of Christ to awaken the conscience than we can be pardoned without Christ. So it is extremely important where the spirit of God is concerned for, for repentance. So we are for ourselves, we can't do what? We can't repent. We hear so many things preached in regard to the conversion of the soul that are not the truth. Many are educated to think that if a man repents, he shall be pardoned. Supposing that repentance is the way, the door into heaven, that there is a certain assure, assured value in repentance to buy for him forgiveness. Now, I'd like to, someone out there to expound. And what the reading say, what I understand from, from this reading right here. Many are educated. They say, we hear so many things we preach in regard to the conversion of the soul that are not the truth. Many are educated to think that if a man repents, he shall be pardoned. Suppose that repentance is the way, the door into heaven. That there is a certain assured value in repentance to buy for him forgiveness. All right? So, anyone out there can comment on this? This PowerPoint here. Anyone? Yeah, Taylor. Yes, yes. We can't comment because we are relearning. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Right. I understand. I understand. I understand. All right. Let me understand clearly. Uh Dr. Um, Sister Lamley, can you come in? Hello? All right. So 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 what it is saying saying to us, all right? Um the plan of salvation does not stop with repentance, which is what most time. This is what we do and get into church. You know, you hear that you're a sinner 
you repent of your sin and you're in church. And that's where the story ends. Now, if we look at the story of um, the, 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 the publican, when he went in, he recognized that he was a sinner and he repented of his, of his sin, right? Right then and there, he asked forgiveness. His heart was genuinely um, repenting of his sin or he repented of his sin there. The Bible says that he went away justified. So the process of justification had taken place. But should it be there and just stop? No, it is, it is the beginning of something else. The plan of salvation is for us to die daily, to walk in the ways of righteousness. Because when you are justified, it means, therefore, that the sin of man is taken away. And therefore, you grow in grace. We grow in grace. So it's not a thing that you're, where is where we are stuck most time in the church. We give up ourselves, we baptize, and we are in the church. And we're walking with the Lord and we are good Christians and we do all the things that we're supposed to do. Not thinking that, so the, the, the same attitude that we had before is the same one we come in church with and it's the same one we live with. You know, the, I, I have a bad temper and I'm in, going to church, but thank God my temper is not as bad now as it used to be when I just came in. All right. And we, we have the little things. I don't fight so much anymore. I don't curse about words so much anymore. Um, even the cigarette, it, it, it doesn't tempt me as much anymore. Right? So we, we look at this. We repent of something and we look at how we can modify ourselves along the way. But this is not the plan of salvation. So that's what this is saying. If we repent and we think that is what is going to get us into heaven, that's not it. Because the process has just begun. It has All just right. begun. All right. So what I'm hearing is that repentance, genuine repentance, is what just that that, that what that, when, when we allow God, God give us the gift and receive it, and things like that. That genuine repentance um, allows us to be justified. But after yes. justification, it now takes sanctification. As you have received Christ, it's no time for you to walk with Him, walk in Him. Okay. So you don't, the thing don't just stop at justification. Can man repent of himself? No more than he can pardon himself. Tears, sigh, resolution, all these are but the proper exercise of the faculties God has given to man. And the turning from sin in the amendment of a life which is God. Where is the merit in the man to earn his salvation? Are to place before God something that is valuable and excellent. Can an offering of money house the land place yourself on this deserving list? Impossible. Nothing. Nothing. Impossible. You want to say something, Brother Duke? Uh, no, it, it was me, Brother Taylor. Okay, Brother was, Okay, yes, yes. yes uh, I was yes. saying, I, was, I wanted to find out. Um, okay. What we have is our will. Our will to, to our, our desire to want to. Um, but laying it at Jesus' feet, laying it to him, putting it to him that, yes, here I am, use me. Here I am, take me. Is it that in that process? Because it is he who supplies all our needs from repentance, all, everything, everything. Is it that we would have required then to lay it all at his, at his feet? Or oh, willpower. You mentioned earlier on that give him our will and he will then transform us. When we take it back from Satan, he will then use it to do for us the good, the good, the good will or the good things. All right. Yes. Well, well the, thing, the thing that we have to understand here is that our will is not safe with us. Right? No. Either our will is controlled by Satan or it will be controlled by God. That's right. So there's no middle ground. It's not like we have the power to have our will a certain way. I think I read a statement that says our will, our will is what? Like rebellious in a way. Right? Because it linked with Satan. So this is the first thing we have to do. Before we can give the will to God, we have to take it from the control of Satan. Yes. And it's important for us okay. to understand this. Okay. And if God does not have it, the will, the control over the will, Satan is the one that has control of the will. But how Satan works, he works off a yo-yo factor. Sometimes if he wants you to be down, 
or if he wants you to remain up like him think you want you want you to believe that you're a good christian doing a lot of goods and things and good and giving your body to be burned and feeding a multitude all of these good things if he wants you to believe that in order for you to think that god has your will he can allow it you understand so he's able to manipulate yeah. as long as he has the will like like what cat tie with a mouse before he kills it that's how satan mm -hmm. plays around with us so it's it's not safe for a moment for satan to have control of our will right question, right. question lt yes how then so it would have required for require of us to take our will from satan and place it in the hand of god how then how then all right I, I, i'll let other persons talk also but the our will is what we want what we will what we want yes you understand? Right. so so we right. want the world we want riches we want we want we you name it we want it mm -hmm. right and that is destruction for us right now when our will is merged with god will we become now what omnipotent we have all yes. power because it's no longer what we will is what God will for us, right? Okay. Is what God okay. will for us. So, <clears throat> is what God wills for us, right? So we, 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 we have to make sure at all times that our will is placed into the will of God, into the okay. into the hand of God. Okay. 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 Pastor, Riley, Pastor, Riley. Pastor Riley, you want to say something out there? So, so brother Taylor. Yeah. Then, then um, I'm trying to look into. Oh. Yeah, I'm here with you now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, good afternoon, afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, my question. I um, I'm listening carefully. The will. What is the will? What yeah. is the will? What Let's is say, that will that we are to take away from Satan? And how do we do that? Oh, well, that's the same question. I said the, the will is the what? The governing? Deciding power. The deciding power. power to the, choose. The, so it the is power not, to choose. Is, so the will is not your desire then? That, um, that's what I wanted your... to get to earlier, Brother Taylor. Yeah. I, just as a gentleman that is speaking now, maybe thinking, I was just thinking about it. If the statement says we are to take our will from the devil because he is the one who is controlling it when we are not with Christ. He is the one who has the will. The only thing we can do is take it from him and put it in the hand of God. Now, I am thinking that our will being in the hand of Satan means that the things that he wants us to do, that is what we will naturally do because we are carnal. Now, when we would have made up our minds, deciding that we want to take it from him, we place it in the hand of God by choosing the things that God would, has chosen for us. And we know what God has chosen for us by his word. So whatever his word says, that is what we are going to do. That is my understanding of taking your will from the devil. So he tempts you to be intemperate. And you know, it is not my, it is not my will. Like Christ would say, not my will, but thine be done. So instead of doing what the devil would want, because our will is basically Satan's will. So instead of doing what we desire, what the flesh wants, which is what the enemy wants, we do what God commands us to do in his word. Uh, may, I add some, may I add something? Hello? Yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. The will. The will is, your, is the deciding portion of your mind your will is your decision making that factor in you that helps you to make decisions it is in your mind so what we really need to give to God is our mind that is where you make decisions so it is our mind that needs to be controlled by God the desires are feelings or wants which you will have to decide 
which way you are going, whether you're going to satisfy those wants or not. And that is decided by your will or your mind. So when you give your mind, remember Romans, Romans what, 12? Yeah. Says what? 12, 1. We are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds or our wills. That is what needs to be renewed. That is what we need to surrender to God. When we do that, our process of thinking and decision making is controlled by God. And so therefore, we will be able to resist the demands, the desires, the fleshy desires, and we will want to desire now the things that God wants for us. So, All right. yeah. All right, yeah, um, yeah. Pastor Ellie is going in the right direction. Right, right there. If we look at the life of Christ, when, when Christ was about to be crucified and he was in the, the garden of Gethsemane, remember that he said something. What was it? What, what did he say? What was his prayer? Father, Father, if it is that we let this cup pass from me. All right? But then he said something else. What he said? He said, nevertheless, not my will. What was his will at the time? What was his desire at that time? Yeah, that that cup should pass for him. Beautiful. So it, 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 is a, it is a drive. It is a mental drive in the faculty, the frontal lobe drive, which control your seat of consciousness and reasoning. That part of it that will determine how you choose, what is in your heart, what is the choice that we make in all that we do. Right? So the, the main thing that was in Christ's mind, you remember when he was praying, when he was going to um, raise Lazarus, what he said, Father, right? I know that you hear me and that you will always hear me. Why? Because I do your will at all times. So therefore, it is a part of consciousness that you choose to do what you do. So if it is that we choose to follow after unrighteousness, then that's where we place our, our decision process. Or we choose by the transforming of the mind and the transformation come about when you give your life to the Lord. Because guess, when you give the, the, the mind to the Lord, because when we give our mind to the Lord, you know, it's not this mind that he's going to use. Because this, this one, the Lord have no use for this one. Because this one is carnal and only will think fleshy. But when we give it to him, um, then doc, he will transform doc. it. Doc. Yes. Yeah. Is the same you, you know? Is the yes. same you, but God is going to change it. Yes. He's going to renew man. it. Right. Yes. So it's not right. a different person. It's no, you, it same is. one. Yeah, that is true. But but except that no, the mind of Christ in, is in you. So what is going to happen is that no, it, the choice that you are going to be made is not really you making it, but you have given the Lord that uh, you done to so make God the God is changing you. you now. Yes, you are saying God is changing from the Our fleshiness. God has changed. Yeah, huh? when you give you right, when you when you give yourself to him, it is God that will now change your outlook because it's not him that is going to be doing. Just like Jesus said, I choose at all times to do the things that please my father. Right? So he has given his will to his father. So anything that pleases the father, that's what he does. So it would have been exactly. the same thing with us. When we give our life to him, the thing that we choose to do is have been the things that he wants us to do. So our will would have been submerged in his will. And our desire would have been his desire. Because we don't, we don't, our desire would have been suppressed. And only thing that would have been alive in us is the desire of Christ. Um, so when we discuss and, the, the, the will, that's what we are actually talking about. And remember, Romans said it is the renewing. Re re that, right, that's it, what I'm saying. It is so a he process. Doesn't have any it doesn't have any use for our old mind. The Lord has so no use is, for the old mind. He has to renew it. So it is a process. And don't oh. forget this part. It is a process. It is it, not it, going to be changed. What? One, the, the transformation. The transformation, as you rightly said earlier, begins with justification. 
but the process of transforming uh, is the work of a lifetime. Uh, so let me, each let me... day, each day, each day when I rise, I submit myself to God. And Sister White says, every morning, every morning, we are to put our plans to God for him to guide us, change or order it in his way. So it is a daily process that God uh, uh, is taking to, just, to just renew a minute, us. Just a minute, yes, Pastor Riley. Just a minute. Yes. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Was Christ sanctified daily? Christ is not you and I. We have to be like him. We, we can't we be like him. Exactly. We have to be exactly. like him. So, no, but, because but we, do not be, we are not like him in one day. I don't understand we that. Never, we, yes, man. I don't understand that. Uh, what no, what I'm right. saying. Let me, uh, let me uh, explain uh, what I'm saying. Uh, just a minute. Because what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing here, is mm -hmm. like the, the whole man that has been modified. Not the new man. So, so what I want to find out is because we know that the new man is exactly like Christ. You agree with me? It depends on what you mean. The man that is born again. Mm -hmm. Huh? Is what? What I mean? Is exactly like, like Christ. Like, exactly like Christ. The man that is born again. Is he exactly like Christ? What do you mean by that? The life that Christ lived. Is it the same life the born again man lives? And that is why you need to be born again each day. That is each why day? Christ has to... Yes, man. Each wow, day. Was... Each day. Each day. Where, where is... I never see that one in the scripture or the spirit of prophecy yet. I've never seen that one yet. <laughs> because yeah, remember, yeah. no, look here. Look here. The, 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 the first birth, was it a everyday birth or a birth or, 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 or a birth? And come, because to born means to come out. And we have, a, we, at that time, we have a whole... Look, look here, we have a whole parent. Our parent was coming from Adam and Eve. We are the only thing that we have because we have the carnal nature that we love to do is sin. Now the new birth, the born again nature is now, we change parent and we get a, a heavenly parent. You agree with me? A new parent. Um, I, think, I think we are to observe and I don't understand exactly what you mean by the no, new man. Because once you accept what? Christ, you are new. No, brother. No, no, when, I said no when I say no, one, when I say no, I should you. say, when, when, when you say accept, when you say accept, yeah, is, there, is there a genuine accept? Is there a genuine accept and an acceptance that is Well, part? look here. As far as I know, once you accept Christ, it should be genuine. Once you <laughs> accept Christ, and receive salvation that is genuine. I can't qualify that. Okay. I can't uh, qualify um, your genuine acceptance. Uh, what happened you now? What happened you now? We did we did sanctification already, and what we are told is that uh, sanctification has nothing to do with sin. You understand? The man what that is mean? sanctified live a process life. We live a victorious life daily, like Christ. And Christ is our only example on that. So the man that is sanctified do not commit sin. I do the sanctified I don't life is not, the sanctified life what is not a life. You mean, all right. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Are you saying that the person who is sanctified? Yes, we see never word. Yep. Yeah, well, that is what sanctification is. Yeah, yeah. Because once you are justified, that is a new birth. And the new birth is involved in sanctification. Yeah, daily. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Huh? Exactly. So, therefore, what I'm saying. So the, the question was asked. You was asking a question. The question is Are you saying that that person never makes a mistake? Um, yeah, it, does the what you say mistake? Because sometimes we call it sin. Mistake sin, is sin. sin. Yes, yes, that yes. person don't never the man sanctified. Never sin again. Yeah, the sanctified never. The, a sanctified man don't sin. I never commit sin. That's what the Bible says, that's what the spirit of prophecy says. Don't live a life of sin. So tell me something now. All those men that you were talking about in the Bible. Yeah. That never sinned after they accepted God, Christ. 
All right? You see, this is the next thing, Mr. Bridget. Our only example, Pastor Riley. Only example. That's why I asked the question, was Lord. Christ sanctified daily? That Our not only the example is who? Christ. Hold I'm not talking about an example. I'm asking you if after they accepted God, they never sinned. They never sinned. Yeah, but uh, let me ask you a question. Um, no, man. Oh, you're going to ask me a question. No, let no, me ask you a question. Did, did Peter accept God? Did, when, Pete, when Christ called him, did he accept? He wasn't converted. So, 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 he was sanctified then. He wasn't, he wasn't living a sanctified life. He never was converted. So none of the disciples were converted then? Well, you know, it's after them come down when Jesus told them to go in and tarry that they really experienced conversion. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Did these men, these men live the life that we are now living? Because remember, you know, our, our, the life that we call a sanctified life is where every now and then we continue to sin. No, sir. Okay. You know what? Let me show you. Let me show you one of the life them. Um, the Bible said, the Bible said something. It said, if a man should ever sin, right? Not if him sin, if he should ever sin, he has Christ as an advocate, right? Now, if you, Pastor Riley, if you start study, even Moses, Moses walked with God for 40 years and commit one sin. Oh, you know that? Because Bible and Spirit of God is a teacher that. <laughs> no, sir. You, know, you can't it's, it's, say that. You no. can't say that. But I am telling you that the Bible and the Spirit of God is a teacher that. Oh, no. Um, you can't say, I can't say that. He never said he never sinned. So you expect while he was there walking with God, he was making mistake. So he never made any mistake. No, no, no. Um, no Brother Taylor? Yeah. I, I'd like to ask Pastor Riley a question. Go ahead. Is it possible for God to justify and sanctify an individual today and that person walks without sin? It's quite possible. Okay. Is there any it's other way? Possible. Is there any other way? It's quite possible. But that now is as the person daily. It is as the person daily commits his life for the Lord. So it has to be a process that is for our daily. Yeah, so, so, so. That is why you need to pray daily. Did Christ pray daily? Of course he did. Yeah, man. So I'm saying to you, brother. That, and, that is, and that is why you overcame. Yes, I'm and saying to you. Same thing, and it's the same thing you and I have to do. Exactly. To overcome. That, yeah, but this, that is why I'm saying Christ has to leave us an example. Christ was sanctified yes. daily. Christ's life was a process. His sanctified exactly. life was a process. Exactly. All of his life, he had, to, he had to be sanctified while he was here. You understand? And that is the reason why I'm saying, and Sister White says it, that daily, when we yeah. arise in the morning, we are to consecrate ourselves to God. And, li and so live like Christ. We, and live like Christ. So don't, pass, he, don't bother so, writing. So, so that he may live out his, in, his life in us on a daily basis. So this is the idea, but I'm liking what you say now, um, Pastor Riley. The idea, is not, not the reality. No, no well, not the first. Right. But the thing is, it now, Pastor Riley, the person who don't live that life, never mm. receiving you, don't re the person who live a life where every time he make mistake, once every six months he make mistake, that person never receives a new birth any at all. I can't answer that. But well, um, because well, you- You're can... like you weren't here already with, with sanctification. No, I was not. Okay, that is it. Because what sanctification, it goes to and show you that- but that, even that, that I was- but sanctify mean there. sanctify mean to set apart. To set apart from what? From sin. Exactly. That's what it means. So that, and look here now. That is why daily I need I need each morning, each time my eyes open, I need to commit myself to God. To ask Him to help me to live that committed life to Him. He has to help me on a daily basis. I can't pray today and get the help for tomorrow. Each day I must do that in order for me. Because if I don't do that, 
the greater possibility is that I am going to fail. Let me ask you a question. If Jesus did not do that one morning, would he have sinned? I can answer that question. Yes, the Pastor is, Riley. The, the fact, the fact must is, sin. No, the fact must is, sin, Pastor Riley. The fact is, he prayed every day. So I can to, any day that I, he did not go for communion with his father, for power and all of those things, he must sin. But guess what now? We are told, Pastor Riley, that when a man is born again, before you're born, you have the, the whole nature which loves sin. So what happened? You're struggling to go against what you really want to do, what you love. But he said, when you receive the new birth, you get power for the first time that now hate all sin with a perfect hatred and love righteousness. So what happened? The struggle that you used to have getting up in the morning to go to God, it's not there anymore because the nature that you know have loved to go to God. No, so but you, you see that though? That don't come in one day, Elder. No, well, no, but, um, the thing we have to understand, you know, it's not, it's not what comes, you know, it's the Holy Spirit comes in. Remember, yeah, you know. I'm saying, I'm saying yeah. to you, Elder, the reason why we cannot reason like that is because when, I'm, when a child is born, the child does not speak like me and you. Just like Christ when he was born. He never speak like me and you. you know what I'm too? We're, we're, we're talking about exactly. So same way like oh, in the physical is the same way in the spiritual. You know what I'm saying to when, you? In the, physical, born, in the physical, Christ drop a gong and going to speak like us. We're not talking about that natural thing because even Christ had a baby really. had to go through that. I'm talking oh, about the spiritual now. Yes. Christians, Christians, when you're born again, the life that a born again man walk is Christ's life and Christ's life alone. Because remember, a probation will close when? If you continue to live that life and probation close, what do I am to you? No, but Elder, Elder, I think you're stressing something that is not necessary. Because right. look here now, hear what I am saying. Can I? If you daily commit yourself to the Lord, it means that you are going to overcome the struggles. It means that the desires that Satan is going to put at you, the temptations, you, is God's strength is going to enable you to overcome. But those temptations are going to come at you every day. You know, you know, but it is the, it's the power of God in you now that is going to enable you to resist that. Because yeah, that the is affinity, true. That, that is the true, affinity, but, see, that the is affinity true. to sin, the affinity to sin, or the mind, the only way temptation come is because and will overcome us, is because it is in us. Yep. We are what is in, in us? that. What is in us? We are, we, are, we are in this world where we are sinful beings. Christ was in this world, you know. Christ was in this Christ world and he was tempted. He was tempted a hundred right. foot more let than us, you and I. Let me, let me talk about continue with the presentation. Uh, let me say one thing before. You know, the mistake, and I'm sorry that you weren't here last, uh, last week, Pastor. The mistake that we're making is where, where choice is concerned. We think that Christianity Charles. is where we get up every day and, and choose to, to serve God. And then we, we, we choose tomorrow. That's not it. What happened, that, that will that must be placed to God is the will where you where, 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 where you, 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 you give up the right. You decide in your in your heart, like of Daniel purpose in his, in his heart, this day you decide that you're rather to die than to commit one, one wrong act. You, 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 the, that deciding power that is within you. For the first time you tell yourself, say, look here man, I, before I be disobedient to the word of God, I rather to die. I say, God, here is it. I, I, and you give that will. No, look what he said about it. He said, when you have given your will to God, your will now become omnipotent. It means all powerful. So if you have your will, which is rebellious, trying to choose God, you're going to fail. But if God has your will, you cannot fail. No man can fail when God has a will. And I'm saying to you that one other thing again is that when, when you, when, whenever you surrender totally to the Lord, that is the time when you get the Holy Spirit living in you and no space is there again for Satan any at all. So whenever, whenever the temptation come, Christ is there, the one who opened the door and said, can I help you? Now what God will do, now that he take up residence, you still have a choice. So he'll say to you, Pastor Riley, 
do you want me to answer or do you want are you are, are, are you want are you want to answer he'll still give it a choice to choose if he must that, answer that is why it is daily elder no but i'm saying the daily thing if you don't give that you see that first choice where you're is like marriage Marriage, you're well, supposed uh, to marry somebody where you love. You're saying, you know, so you're saying the same thing to me. No, 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 we're not saying the same thing. Why? Why are you saying we're not saying the same thing? That choice that we yeah. think that there's power in our choice it to is. get up and choose every day. I am saying to you that when we surrender the will to God, you now God gave us the Holy Spirit that now gave us power to hate sin. Before that, Pastor Riley, you never hate sin. I never hate sin. We love sin. Now, if I hate you, Pastor Riley, I wouldn't even be talking to you right now. I wouldn't sit beside you. When you hate something, you, you want it nowhere at all around you. So it's easier for you then to choose to choose to not to be in the presence of that thing because you hate it. Before that, we love it, fighting not to be there. So I'm saying to you that that is not a, that's what Christians do. We get up every day and we say, Lord, we choose you. And then we feel, no, that, that you want to be sold out. Which part is like, a, 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 like one of these men that, that decided to, 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 to the, 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 the man decided to blow people. When they came and they sold out that this is what they want to do. From day one, they want to, to, to strap mom and himself and go and, 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 and blow people. That first decision to do that sold out everything. So all the choice that is happening after that, that first decision is what makes a difference. I'm saying to you, the will that God is asking for us to take from, remember, you know, we have our choice, you know. But there's something that Satan has control of that must be taken from Satan and given to God. When God has that, then he is the one. That what we do now is his will. Is his, when, when Satan has have our will, we do what Satan will. When God has our will, we do what God, what, what, what God, what, what, what God will for us. That's what it is. He work out his good will and pleasure in us. So the, 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 the thing of we just choosing daily, randomly, you must feel because you have never choose to give God the will fully. Say, God, this belongs to you. I'll never take it back again. Um, I'd rather die before I take it back. None of us have never, many of us, not none. Many of us have never done that yet. This is what Christ did from day one. His will was given to the Father. And every morning he goes back for power, right? For power to go forth again for the day of duty. So it takes no thought about another day. So it, it ought to be with us. As, as my sister wife said, many who were baptized were buried alive. Self did not die. So I'm saying to you, in order for God to get our will, death must take place. Death has to take place. So the, 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 if you were here last week, you'd have recognized that we, she was talking about false sanctification. Where, where, where this is what person was saying, that persons who were sanctified, the, the, um, which, is, which is a process, had sin to do with it also. When it comes to sanctification, brother, you look at Christ, Christ alone. Any other life outside of Christ's life is not sanctification. And if you notice the men in back there, that sin, our sin that we commit today is the same sin that has been plaguing us for the longest of a while. And these sins are not, these sins are willful sin, sin of the heart. So, Virgin, if you want to, if you want to know, what is sanctification? We have to look at Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. When Christ was five years old, if he had died, he would have died perfect. When he was 12 years old, if he had died, he would have died perfect. So the man that is born again, he will not be tempted more than what he's able to bear because God is the one that will temper the, 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 the temptation that he'll be able to bear it. And he will also plan a way of escape, right? When the man, when the man receives a new birth. The, new, the first birth was a flaw. The first birth is a hurt the birth that the holy thing that the hurt the birth does is, 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 is sin. The new birth is a heavenly birth. How can you have a heavenly birth and still doing hurt the things? It can't work. Can't work in at all, Virgin. All right. Let me move on a little bit. The comments. He said, as I said, can man repent of himself? It's not moving. It's not moving. It's not moving. This, this time. It's just that moving. All right. He said, who gave the understanding? Who moved the heart? Who first drew the mind to view Christ on the cross of Calvary? Faith is rendering to God the intellectual power, abandonment of the mind and will to God, and making Christ the only door to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Faith is what? 
rendering to God the intellectual powers, abandonment of the mind and will to God, and making Christ the only door to enter into the kingdom of heaven. When men learn they cannot earn righteousness by their own merit or works, and they look with firm and entire reliance upon Jesus Christ as their only hope, they will not be so much of self and so little of Jesus. Now look at this. At this. No repentance is genuine that does not work reformation. The righteousness of Christ is not a cloak to cover unconfessed or unforsaken sin. It is a principle of life that transforms the character and controls the conduct. Holiness is holiness for God. You know what is um, sanctification? It is the entire surrender of heart and life to the indwelling of the principle of heaven. The entire, the whole entire man is surrendered. It's like when a demon possesses someone, whatever that demon wants the person to do, him going to do it. If he say kill your mother, that demon going to kill your mother. Because what? He's not possessed by that spirit. I'm saying to you, when God comes in and, you, and we give him that will and say, God, you're free to do what you want to do. That's it. That is it. Souls and body are defiled and polluted by sin. The heart is estranged from God, yet many are struggling in their own finite strength to win salvation by good works. And this is what I believe that most of us we are doing today. We are struggling. You see, a struggling man cannot be trusted. When a man is, you see, if, if you have a lion that you shot him and him struggling, would you go over and touch him? You can't touch him, he can still kill you. But if the lion dead, you can do anything you want to do with him. So as long as we are struggling, brethren, why are we struggling? Because the thing that we want, we love, we're trying to go against it, right? Jesus, they think, will do some of the saving, right? Does Christ do some of the saving? Does man have something? He said, they must do the rest. So Jesus, they think, will do some of the saving, and they must do the rest. They need to see by faith the righteousness of Christ as their only hope for time and for what? For eternity. God has given man faculties and capabilities. God works and cooperate the gift he has imparted to man, and man, by being a partaker of the divine nature, doing the work of Christ, may be an overcomer, an overcomer and win eternal life. The Lord does not propose to do the work he has given man power to do. Man part must be what must be done. No, the only thing that we have, we have the power of our choice. We don't have power. Our, our foreparents sold us out. And from our foreparents sold us out. We don't, Adam before the fall could tell Satan, no, we don't have that privilege anymore. So while we desire to say, no, we have to call on Jesus, who has the power. You understand? And this is why we have to have Christ living in us. Right? So Christ and his power don't separate. When you want power, you want Christ. The both of them come hand in hand. He said, he must be a laborer together with God, yoking up with Christ, learning his meekness, his lowliness. God is the all-controlling power. He bestowed the gift, man received them. He bestowed the gift, men received them, and act with the power of the grace of Christ as a living agent. So when you yoke up with Christ, can you imagine... Can you imagine an ant yoke up with an elephant? Can you imagine a mice, a mouse yoke up with an elephant? Eh? That cannot compare to us yoking up with Christ because Christ has what? All power. Nothing can stop us while we yoke up with Christ. Nothing, absolutely nothing. There need to be a continual taking in of the gift of God in order that there may be as free a giving out of these gifts. It is a continual receiving and then Restoring, the Lord has provided that the soul shall receive nourishment from him to be given out again in the working out of his purpose, purposes. In order that there be an outflowing, there must be an incoming of divinity to humanity. I will dwell in them and walk in them. The soul temple is to be sacred, holy, pure, and what? Undefiled. No, God... Christ in us, Bridget, is the hope of glory. God wants to live in us. He wants to walk up and down. His, he wants to dwell in us. That's what he wants to do. And as long as, as Christ is in us, sin has no latter part to that because darkness 
and light cannot mix. In order for you to sin or make mistake, it simply means that Christ is not in the heart. And Christ do not play upon the river, upon the bank. The hardest battle virgin that has ever been fought is the battle to deny self, to surrender self. It's hard to give up self. Very hard. But what is the law? She says, easy living after you have died, after you surrender, is extremely easy living because when you surrender self, Christ now for the first time has full control. The thing is that we do not surrender self, but we expect to live Christ's life. How easily from the transgressor standpoint could God have abolished his law, thus providing a way whereby men could be saved and Christ remain in heaven. The doctrine we teach freedom through grace to break the law is a fatal delusion. Now, this is something that I feel about now. Because what we stress upon most as Christians, we stress upon the grace of God, which the grace of God is really the character of God. We stress upon the forgiveness of God and not the power of God to sustain. Now, there is a, there, Sister White said that whenever we sin, the, the demonic angel mock our guardian angel, mock Christ. And Christ is saying, who is stronger, our God or our devil? And Satan is saying, I am God, and I'm going to prove that I am stronger. Now, what Satan does is that, remember, you know, Satan is a deceiver. You cannot deceive a man with lie. If I give you a bottle of poison, I say, drink it. You're not going to drink the, the bottle of poison, my poison, because that is the truth. So in order for you to drink, you have to mix up truth and error, and mostly truth with error. So if I want to poison you, I have to give you a nice glass of orange juice with one grain of cyanide, and I give it, and you drink it nicely, thinking that you're drinking orange juice when it's poison, you drop down and dead, right? You drop down and dead. But what Christ said, Christ said, I'm asking you for all or nothing at all. Now, do we believe when God said that he's able, that he will not give us more than what we can bear? Do we really believe that? And he'll also plan a way of escape. Do we believe that? Because if Christ will not give us more than we can bear, how come we are sinning? How come Christ, is, is he entered in lie or something else? Because if, the, if I tell you, that I'm sending you to town and I give you a pencil to carry. And I say, I know you can bear this pencil, but I'm going to still allow you to give it to someone. Find a way of escape for it. Christ said that. Christ said that he's able to keep us from falling. When? When? When you, when you accept him as your Lord and Savior and the spirit of God comes in, then he's able to keep you from what? From falling and to what? Present us what? Faultless. So this, 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 this doctrine, the doctrine which teaches freedom through grace to break the law is a fatal delusion. Every transgressor of God's law is a sinner and none can be sanctified while living in known sin. I like this part because what is happening now, when you talk about known sin, it's almost next to impossible for us as Seventh-day Adventists who have been around so long to have a sin that we don't know that is sin. Because there's something I recognize about the sinner out there. You see, the sinner out there, when the sinner recognizes that someone is living like Christ, it is not natural. This is different. So what that sinner will do, he'll look at you every second, every minute, because he cannot behold that a human believe that a human being can live like that. Do you know that no matter what sin you do in the sight of that sinner, he knows that he's sin, and from that day, he sees teeth and says, yeah, he did. So I'm saying to you, if Every transgressor of God's law is a sinner, and none can be sanctified while living in, in, a, in while living in, in known sin. Then how can we equate sanctification with sin? It ought not; it can't happen any at all. As long as a man has sinned once every two weeks, once a week, once a six month, that man was never justified. That man is not sanctified. I, 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 that man, I shouldn't even say never just say, that man is not sanctified. Okay? So, let us move on. He said, the condescension and agony of God, dear son, were not endured to purchase from men liberty to transgress the Father law and yet sit down with Christ in his throne. It was that through his merit and the exercise of repentance and faith, the most guilty sinner might receive pardon and obtain strength. Obtain what? the Holy Spirit to live a life of obedience. The sinner is not saved in his sin, but what? But from his sin, what is the strength that we receive? God dwelling in us. And when he comes in, his intention is not to come out because he has been waiting a lifetime for us to surrender. We would have never surrender. Know that his father places us in his hand. No man can pluck it out. 
That is why our only exam, what was written a fourth time, was written for our learning brethren. We are told that, Mo, um, that Moses um, was deceived. We are told that um, David was deceived. But Christ lived the perfect life and he himself, we must follow his step. And this is what is happening over the years. Over the years, we are looking for sanctification from men who sin. No, Christ is the example when it wants to talk about sanctification and justification. He's our only example. Because when the time comes, we can't go and say, Father David, Father Moses. And say, no, 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 no. Moses or David did not die for us. Christ died on the cross of Calvary. He came not to save mankind in sin, but what? From sin. If I'm in the water and I'm Jonah and somebody saved me from that water, what am I going back in that water for when there's death? It is astonishing how we treat our very best friend. How little condescend we repose in him who is able to save to the uttermost and who has given us every evidence of his great love. He said what? If you love me, keep my commandment. If you say you love me, it's still a sin. You're a liar and the truth is not in you. Why do you think when Christ was here, the, the, the message that Christ preached, he said, go and sin no more. Let's a worse curse come up here. Why you call it me friend when you're not being obedient? Christ never preached a water down doctrine yet, you know? Nowhere in the Bible Christ preached a water down doctrine that give any, any one of us hope. I'm telling that our only hope is Christ in us. My brethren, are you expecting, you see, this is, are you expecting, my brethren, are you expecting that your merit will recommend you to the favor of God, thinking that you must be free from sin before your trust is power to save? This is what a lot of us do. A lot of persons say they can't come to Christ yet. They must fix up first before they come. It's like you're sick. And you're not going to go to the doctor. You're going to get better first, and then you go to the doctor. It makes no sense. If this is the struggle going on in your mind, I fear you will gain no strength and will finally become discouraged. So none of us, you see, to live a sanctified life, it's, 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 a, it's a supernatural power that must live in us. None of us of ourselves can live a sanctified life. Christ did not call any one of us to try to be obedient, not one, because not one of us can try and be obedient. None of us have that power. What Christ is asking us to do is to die. He said, die, and when you die, then I will come in and work out my good will and good pleasure in you. But what we're doing every day, we're trying to fight against a supernatural being, which is Satan, expecting that we can't win. No, our only safety is in Christ. As Moses lifted up a serpent, in the wilderness, even so was the Son of Man lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? Have eternal life. You remember this brazen um, serpent that was lifted up in the, 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 in the wilderness? When the men got him and said, all you need to do, look and live. They said that don't make no sense. It don't make no sense, none at all. Some tried to reach physicians. Some tried to help themselves when all they need to do is look. Remember, you know, these serpents biting them, from all handle, right? They are dying and all Christ is saying, look unto me, I'll lead that labor and heavy labor and I'll give you rest. Satan the serpent is tempting us daily to sin and we are sinning daily and Christ is saying to us, look unto me and I'll save you, right? He said, if you are conscious of your sins, do not devote all your power to mourning over them, but look and what? Live. Jesus is our only savior. And although millions who need to be healed will reject his offered mercy, not one who trusts in his merit will be left to perish. Let me tell you what's happening here, Bridget. God is drawing us to a place where he can transform us. But what we do, we mistake that, that drawing life for the, new, for the new life, for the new birth. Right? Where we continue to make mistakes and we slip and we fall. The Bible tells us that if a seed falls in the ground and it does not die, it abides alone. Now, let me ask you a question. When the seed falls in the ground and died, it dead? And if it don't dead, it abides alone. But as soon as that seed dies, that's the time when growth starts to take place. So the Christian who is not born again, the Christian who did not die to self, brethren, the only growth that Christian can grow is fat and tall. Can go in grace. He said, why do we realize our help or helpless condition without Christ? We must not be discouraged. We must rely upon a crucified and risen Savior 
poor, sin, sick, discouraged soul, look and live. Jesus has placed his word. He will save all who come unto him. That is what Christ is doing. You see, most of us, we don't come to Christ. We come to the church. We don't come to the church to Christ because when we come to Christ, we are able to see what pastor is doing. We are able to see what the hell is doing. Our eyes is not single. Our eyes is not fixed on Christ. Right? Come to Jesus and receive rest and peace. You may, and the Lord said, my peace, what it does, it passes all understanding. He said, great peace of they that love thy law, nothing can, uh, can offend us. You may have the blessing even now. Satan suggests that you are helpless and cannot bless yourself. It is true that you are helpless, but lift up Jesus before him. I have a risen Savior. In him I trust, and he will never suffer me to be confounded. In his name I charm. He is my righteousness and my crown of rejoicing. Let no one here feel that his case is hopeless, for it is not so. So I'm saying to you, while Christ is joining us, and we are there falling and slipping and rolling in the dirt and in the mud and things like that because we do not want to come. You know what Christ said? He said, if our hurt, the parent, is willing to give us good gift, he said, do you know how much I want to give you the Holy Spirit? You know why we don't get it? You see, a lot of us think that we have the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit of God comes in, Sister White said, not one fruit is missing. And when he comes in, he comes in to take up resident. No man moves into a home today with the intention of moving out tomorrow. Right? You may see that you are sinful and undone. This is a man that is, being, that is, that, that is calling, that is being drawn. But it is just on this account that you need a savior. If you have sinned to confess, lose no time. These moments are golden. If we confess our sin, is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You think after you think God, you see what what you need to understand the man that is born of God. God don't get up every day and have to cleanse him from sin that he's continually doing every once a week, twice a week, anything like that. That man, you cannot call someone that is sinning twice once a week a Christian. You can't do that. We are told in the writing that many who were baptized were buried alive, self did not die. And this is why there are so many perplexities in the church. Why? Because you do not bury an unconscious person. You do not bury someone that is in a coma. The only person that's supposed to be buried is a dead man. So as long as you place a man that is unconscious or in a coma into the church that is dealing with righteousness, when he wake up and find himself as a sinner man in a righteous place, is war. And this is why at our board meeting, at our everything, there's war because many of us did not die. And we are told in the writing that the man who did not die at his baptism, the father reject him, the son reject him, but he's not cast off. They cannot claim any one of us as son as long as we were buried alive, as long as we're not born again. You know, many of the son, the people them out there, they like to talk about their born again. Do you know, Virgil, let me ask you a question. Do you know that the man... On a scale from zero to ten, where self is concerned, Christ was at zero, no self, selfless altogether. Now, which one of us out there think, based on the life that we are living, that we are at zero, the same life that Christ is living? Because what I want us to know, Bridging, is that the born again man is at zero because he no longer lives in the whole nature, he must have a change of nature. He has a divine nature, and daily he must now learn to walk in that nature. And the one that holds his hand is Christ. He said, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. For Jesus has promised it. Precious Savior, his arms are hoping to receive us. And his great heart of love is waiting to bless us. This is what is happening to us as Christians. Some of us for 5, 10, 20, 30 years have not gone into the arms of Christ. This is why we make our mistake, Bridget. This is why David and Moses and all these men become our example. And we, the only example that the Father said here, we can't claim him as our example. These men, Sister White said, they used to go to kindergarten school. They used to go to kindergarten school. We are not in kindergarten. We are in university. So what was written at four times was written for our learning. What Moses did, we learn. Why did he? What David did, we learn. Why did he? What Christ did, we learn. So 
Some seem to feel that they must be on probation. They say, oh, five minutes. Some seem to feel that they must be on probation and must prove to the Lord that they are reformed before they can claim his blessing. But these dear souls may claim the blessing even now. They must have his grace, the spirit of Christ, to help their infirmities, and they cannot form a Christian character. Now, or they cannot form a Christian character. So what happened? Christ said that his Holy Spirit shall be with us. But what, the Holy Spirit, what he wants the Holy Spirit to do is be in us. Right? So as long as the Holy Spirit is with us, he will, he will try to, 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 to bring us to a level where we can humble ourselves that he can take full. You see, you remember Judas? All along Judas was with Christ. Was he possessed by Satan? No. He wasn't possessed, but Satan controlled him. But when it's time for him to leave, Jesus said to him, whatever they do, do it quickly. What the Bible say? And Satan enter him. Now from Satan enter him, that's it. So a lot of us, brethren, as long as we are, let me tell you something, brethren, as long as we are carnal, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, it cannot please God any at all. As long as we are carnal, Satan is the one that has control. And this is why we want a new birth that allows us to sin daily. We want, you know what is new? It, it, it said, whole things are passed away. What are the old things? Sin. Behold, not something, you know. All things become new. We are not, we are recreated. Just like how God created Adam and Eve first, God is a, is a, is a, is a is recreation that takes place again. Not a patchwork where it fix us up. We are brand new brethren. As a matter of fact, when you are born again, you have a blank mind to know, to know, develop, moving forward. Right? Repentance as well as forgiveness is the gift of God to Christ. It is through the influence of the Holy Spirit that we, con that we are convicted of sin and feel our need of pardon. None but the contrite are forgiven. But it is the grace of God that makes the heart penitent. He's actuated with all our weaknesses and infirmities, and he will help us. Some who comes to God by repentance and confession, and even believe that their sins are forgiven, still fail of, of claiming as they should the promises of God. So as much as we come and we believe that we repent and everything, what are the promises of God? He's here but brethren to keep us from falling. What are the promises of God? He'll never give us more than what we can be. What are, what are the promises of God? He'll never leave us nor forsake us. What are the promises of God? We are sons and daughters of God. He said they do not see that Jesus is an ever-present Savior and they are not ready to commit the keeping of their soul to him, relying upon him to perfect the work of grace begun in their, in their heart. You see, if, if, you see we are double-minded. And because we are double-minded, we don't want one husband. We want two husbands. We want to have Satan as our husband and Christ on the side. That's what we want. You understand? So every now and then we go please Satan, and every now and then we please Christ. That is spiritual abomination. He said, while they think they are committing themselves to God, look at this. I'm going to read this back over. They do not see that Jesus is an ever-present Savior, and they are not ready to commit the keeping of their soul to him, relying upon him to perfect the work of grace begun in their heart. While they think they are committing themselves to God, there is a great deal of self-dependence. Now, let me ask you a question, Bridget. If there is no self-dependence, if we depend on God only, if we depend on the word of God only, will we fail? There are conscientious souls that trust partly to God and partly to themselves, which is to Satan. This is why we continue to sin. If you trust all the way to God, like our Christ trusts all the way to God, right? The same life that Christ lived is the same life that we're going to live. But People want to hear a doctrine. You know, a lot of persons say this doctrine does not give us any hope any at all. You know why? Because for you to remove sin from my life any at all, that I can't have a little hope of sinning and be saved, it's madness for the man that is carnal. Because the man that is carnal, what he, what, what, what he wants to do is not what he finds himself doing. 
The thing that he want to do is not that he do, and the things that he don't want to do, that he find himself is, is doing. I remember one day I was in Portland coming home and something went wrong in my tire then. And while I was coming home, that car on the junction was just creaking, wanted to take me over the precipice bridge. And I held on to that car on the junction and carried straight home and parked it in my garage. Safe and sound. This is what is happening to us. We are defective. We get a nature that is a carnal nature. We are defective and this nature wants to do one thing and sin. But if we allow, if we recognize that we are this wretched man and we allow Christ to take full control of this vehicle, as wretched as it is, Christ is able to take us home to Beulah and Bridget. Christ is able to take us home, brethren. Every time we sin, sin is not against man. Sin is against God. Sin never kill man. Sin kill God. So you are saying that Satan have all right. Did you know that Satan said that God is unjust and he's unfair because he has given man commandment and law to keep that he know that we have to sin? And that a lot of, that, that, that whenever we talk in any way, that we come to Christ, we have a new creature and we're still sinning. We are really and truly sanctioning what Satan is saying. Christ is our holy example, brethren. They do not look to God to be kept by his power. What are you saying? That Satan, who now no power, is he able to, to take us out. They do not look to God to be kept by his power, but depend upon watchfulness against temptation and the performance of a certain duties for acceptance with him. So that's what we do in a virgin. We are the one that is trying to make sure that we get up every morning and pray. We, we're trying to, 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 to make sure that we go to God. It's pure works because we have not surrendered the will to God. Never did yet. Satan still have the will, virgin. But what we do every month is that, let me show you what is happening, virgin. The man that is carnal is lying on flat in sin. He's a dead man. But while he's carnal, probably somebody passing and him curse a bad word and say, please forgive me. But guess what? In carnal, the only thing that can come out of him is that bad word. While him dim tell a lie, him say, oh, Father, forgive me. But he's carnal, he has to tell a lie. So what the Lord is saying, you got to kill the root. The root has to go as long as the root exists any at all. You go is a must as long as you are carnal, brethren. And this is what we think. We think that we, we carnal today and we become uncarnal tomorrow. We, uh, we born today and we become unborn today. That is not that is not that is not so any at all. First John 3, verse 9, that he that is born of God, do not commit sin. Why? Because Christ lives in him and he cannot sin because he's born of God. How do I believe this? Because Christ came here and he came in the flesh. That was given problem. But what happened? God who was Christ lives in the flesh and overcome. So if we who are in the flesh allow God, Christ, to live in our flesh, we too will overcome. They do not look to God to be kept by his power, but depend upon watchfulness against temptation and the performance of certain duties for acceptance with him. There are no victories in this kind of faith. The kind of faith where we depend on us. There's no victory. Such a person tied to no purpose. Their souls are in continual bondage and they find no rest until their burden are laid at the feet of Jesus. You know when you find rest? When you turn over the will to God. And he knows. Why you think he said when our will is merged with God's will, we become omnipotent as all power like God because God cannot be tempted with evil. It's just that said. Every day, brethren, we have to go back for power for today. It's not that you die today and wake up tomorrow. Because if you die and wake up and sit and catch you, wake up, you're just dead. When in the same state, but I have to go to my father for power. Power that when I go to the day, I mean, after to be thinking about sinning. Did you know that when you go to God in the morning for power and commune with Him, you don't think about sinning? What God does, He dispatch angel before us and fly every trap, every snare of the devil. But guess what? That cannot last for tomorrow. And this is why I'm saying to you any day that Christ did not go to the Father, because remember, you know, Christ did not have the power. Who have the power? The Father is the one that had the power. And if He did not go for that power this morning, we'd be going up a phone up against a for that is more powerful than him because he could not use his divinity so any day that christ did not go to the father he would have sinned 
is a must. There is need of constant watchfulness and earnest loving devotion, but these will come naturally when the soul is kept by the power of God through faith. Naturally, brethren, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, Christ is able to work out his good will and his good pleasure in us. Naturally, like all the flowers turn to the sun, naturally the only thing that you'll be doing is what is right. Why? You know, let, let me close. As I close, let me tell you, we, we can do nothing, absolutely nothing to commend ourselves to divine favor. Nothing. You know, I went to a elder, a very good elder at my church. He was a prayer warrior also, solid prayer warrior. And I went to him one day, I went by his house, and he asked me the question. I said, Brother Taylor, how do we bother again? What is happening? I, you know, and I said to him, I said, um, let me ask you a question. I don't remember if I saw a pretty girl next door, and I, I was just putting it in, in, in his imagination and i said look here suppose you have a nice shapey pretty girl next door and she come to you and she said look here man i know for a fact that you're a man of god i have been watching you for years and when i see you it's like seeing christ only but there's something that i must tell you i am madly in love with you i dream about you nightly and i start talking and all of a sudden that held that look to the heaven with one of the biggest smile sardonic smile on his face just smiling away at to say to him, Helda, come back here. And you know what the Helda said? He said, Brother Taylor, boy, that would be hard. And that hard come from the bottom of his belly. Why? Because she's pretty and she looked good. And I said, all right, my brother, hold on a minute. Let me put it a different way. I said, suppose another one of your neighbor came by you to tell you the same thing, that she's madly in love with you, that she desires, she dreams about you, she wants to be with you daily. But this neighbor, her nose was big that you could look through the side and see the up in her nostril. She had no teeth in her mouth. Her, her eyes was full of matter. And by I start saying that this man face make up in a way, how hard do you think it would be for him to say to this one, no? If he hate this one already, that's why it's easy for him to say no. But because him loved the pretty one, him can't say no, he's it to the one that him love. So I'm saying to us, brethren, that because Christ does not live, abide in the heart, we still love unrighteousness. So we are highly modified. We are highly advanced. And we call that Christianity. So we have all right to get angry every now and then when somebody trouble us. We have all right to be thin-skinned. We have all right to, 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 to get upset. And you know the Bible says, great peace are they that love that they love. Brethren, all of these are false doctrine. Christ is our only example. Nobody else. We must not trust at all to ourselves or to our good works. But when, as erring sinful being, we come to Christ, we may find rest in his love. God will accept everyone that comes to him, trusting wholly in the merits of the crucified Savior. So you, you, don't, you don't leave out one person. Love springs in the heart. There may be no ecstasy of feeling, but there is an abiding peace, trust. How can the question not have peace, right? The question now to be asked is, are the professed followers of Christ complying with the condition upon which a blessing pronounced? Are they separating in the spirit and practice from the world? This is what we need to ask ourselves. How hard to, how hard to come out to come out and be separated from the worldly habit and custom. But let us look well to it that Satan does not allure and deceive us through false representation. Eternal interests are near, are here involved. God claims should come first. His requirements should receive our first attention. Every child of fallen Adam must, through the transforming grace of Christ, become obedient to all God requirements. Many close their eyes to the plainest teaching of his word because the cross stand directly in the way. This is where the problem lies. He said, if any man is going to come after me, let him first deny self. You cannot come, you cannot follow Christ if one iota of self remains. It is impossible. If they lift it, they must appear singular in the eyes of the world. And they hesitate and question and search for some excuse whereby they may shun the cross. Satan is ever ready and he presents plausible reason why it would not be best to obey the word of God, just as it reads. 
Thus souls are fatally what deceived. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Let me ask you a question, Virgin, as I close. Myself, Donovan Kelly, we are 10 city, 20 years now. 20 years now. Still falling and sinning and falling and sinning. And you ever tell me that God don't have the power. Satan has all power. Eh? So it takes time. You know, it takes time. What about those persons where we are told that many thousand will be converted in a day? They don't they want the time to learn. Any man that comes to Christ and surrender totally to Christ will live like Christ. Desire for goodness and purity are right as far as they go. But if we stop here, they avail nothing. Many will go down to ruin while hoping and desiring to overcome their evil propensities. They do not yield the will to God. They do not choose to serve him. You know what it means to choose to serve God? It means that you choose to serve. Can you imagine us having a wife or a husband that while they were saying that they were going to get married, in their mind, they're they, 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 they thinking of every now and then to, to visit Mira, to visit Tom. Eh? If you know that about, if we know that about our spouse, would you marry such a one? Eh? If somebody tell you truth and say, look here, man, uh, I, I can't, I can't vouch that it will happen because, you know, I'm a sinner and, and things might happen. So I, I don't want to tell you that I, I won't commit adultery. I don't want to tell you that I won't flirt. I don't want, would you marry such a one? No way, brother, you would marry that one. We need to know that the person that we are married at giving up their life totally in sickness, in death, do us part. Nothing should come between us at that time. So why is it that we expect God to marry to us when we cannot give God our whole heart or the whole thing that says, God, here I am, I rather to die. Here are they that love not their life unto death. We rather die than sin against God. This is what we call for in the last days, you know. Your will is the spring of all your actions. And I think I will finish here. This will that forms so important a factor in the character of man was, the fall, was in the fall given to the control of Satan. And he has ever since been working in man to will and to do of his own pleasure. So you see what happened? Why do you think we're sinning? Why do you think we're making mistakes? It's because Satan is the one that is in us, working to do his will and his good pleasure. Satan is the one that is in control. He still has control of the will. But to the utter ruin and misery of man, what does it mean? You see, from day one, God's will was given over to the Father. So when the pressure take him at Calvary and him say, Father, not my will. What, what Christ want? Christ did not want to go through with it. He did not want to drink the cup. When him say, Father, it's not what me want. It's what you want. What do we want? Do we want what Christ want? Because if we didn't want what Christ want, we'd have the Holy Spirit would be filled with the Spirit of God because he said that if our Holy Spirit is ready to give us good gift, you know how much we want to give us the Holy Spirit, but a lot of us think when we get the Holy Spirit, we continue still to make mistakes, continue to sin just the same. I am saying to you, brethren, that God is coming back for a church without spot, without blemish. Only those are without sin that will make up the 144,000 if we do not lose sight of this false doctrine. If we don't lose sight of them, brethren, we're going to be in problem because what a man believes that is what he will live. Is it that we believe that God has all power or we believe that Satan has some power? You will. But the infinite sacrifice of God is giving Jesus his beloved son to become a sacrifice and enabling to say without violating one percent from principle of his government. Yield yourself up to me. Give me that will. Take it from the control of Satan, and I will take possession of it. Then I can work in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's what is happening here. As here, I read, it said, but the infinite sacrifice of God in giving Jesus. Why Christ had to die, Bridget? If there was an excuse to, to be found where the law is concerned, Christ would not have to die. Then if, if God had to come and die, to show that there's no excuse for sinning. Why is it that the, 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 us who call ourselves sons and daughters and children of God still sinning? When God had to die, 
It's about the infinite sacrifice that God in giving Jesus, his beloved son, to become sacrificed for sin, enable to him to say, without violating one principle of his government, heal yourself up to me. Give me that will. Give our will to God. It's not a choice where you choose today and choose today and choose today. But that way you choose today, Satan, and you choose the next minute. Just like you remember, Peter. Who does man said I am? Thou art the son of God. I immediately say Satan said, but well, and what well, well, And immediately he knew Christ. Why? Because Satan was in control of his will. He had not yet received a new birth. That is what is happening to us. The man that received the new birth do not commit sin. When you find out this, does that mean because of the life that you're living, that we're living, that we are, we are lost? No, Christ is saying, quickly come. Come unto me quickly because probation is about to close. You know why Christ is still in the most holy place? Because we as Christians still sending up, sending up sin. As long as Christians still sending up sin, if you can't come out, the day name day that we stop sin, Christ is going to step out because you no longer have any time to intercede. When we give you, when he gives you the mind of Christ, your will become as his will. No. Would keep on talking and say, let this mind be in you. Now, when we have the mind of Satan, all oh, will become like Satan will, don't it? And we sin. But he's a deceiver, so he don't, don't sin straight through. We do a lot of good while sinning. So he said, when he gives you the mind of Christ, your will become as his will. So what kind of will that? If we have the mind of Christ, a will to sin, a will to make mistake, and your character is transformed, not transforming. Even though talk about the renewing of the mind is what we do with growing in grace. When Christ was five years old, he was tempted. When he was 10 years old, he was tempted at a higher point. When he became 15, he was tempted at a higher point. So the, the renewing takes place, empowerment until the character is formed. Transform to be like Christ's character. When he gives you the mind of Christ, you will, not might enough, your will become as his will. You know, we still are sin. Eh? If I have the mind of Christ, or, I, or, am I, or am I still sinning? What am I saying? That Christ's mind is a sinful mind? No, it said, go and sin no more, lest a worse curse come upon us. No, I know I, I just read through all of this. I got some time to stop any at all. Quickly, I don't hear from Brother Duke. Brother Duke is still out there? Yes, yeah, still here, still here, Elder. Any comment, Brother Duke? Because you know you have to at least say something before we, we leave. Any comment? Yeah, it was, it was, um, today was my first time out to speak. And one of the things I, I my, my, one of the things I had to research on today is the whole topic of the just for the unjust. And I'm telling you, Brother Taylor, after going through that research, I concluded point blank 